Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you feeling? Great. That's what I like to hear. It's a pleasure to be in Dallas. I'm almost starting to feel like JR again. Um, as you can imagine, it's great to be among so many leaders, you know. Uh, does anybody know why it's so good to be the lead dog? Anybody? You got it. Sergeant Preston reminded us the view only changes with the lead dog. But as leaders, we must inspire others with our power and our energy. And we must channel that energy leveraging the right vision. And that's where I come in. I help you navigate our bewildering wilderness separating the chaff from the wheat, the trends from the fads, to help you articulate a better vision. And how do you do that? How do you separate trends from fads? Well, trends change social values. Fads merely skim the surface. And to be able to give you a much better sense for where we as consumers are heading, I've created a framework called Uber Trends, of course, which are major ways that cascade through society, leaving many trends in their wake. And today I'm going to cover three. The digital lifestyle, the marriage between man and machine. Time compression, the acceleration of life. And finally, unwired, the unhooked generation. And in the process, I'm going to tweet you up. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? That iPhone has changed everything. I love it. It's so crazy now, people camp in front of the stores waiting for a cell phone to go on sale. How crazy is that? Isn't that insane? While I was standing in line, <laughs> it reminded me of this joke Jay Leno once told. The only time kids go camping now is in front of a Best Buy waiting for a video game to go on sale. Isn't that true? How many of you here use the iPhone? We're not alone. We have a commander in chief now who uses his Barackberry. <laughs> As Jay Leno says, the Barack Berry needs no batteries, it runs on hope. <laughs> and it's funny because, you know, when you think about it, seven out of ten baby boomers say that the cell phone has contributed to a decay in workplace etiquette. Yet only five of Gen Yers believe the same. Yet, Whenever you enter a conference room, you can't help but observe so many boomers doing the Blackberry prayer. <laughs> <laughs> they look up once in a while to see if they're missing anything in the meeting, and then it's down again doing some more prayers. <laughs> Texting team fell down a manhole in Staten Island because she was oblivious to the world around her. Right? Luckily, she didn't get hurt. Of course, that's nothing compared to the tow truck driver who was texting on one phone while talking on another. The ultimate, ultimate driving while texting phenomenon. You know, DWT, the new DUI. We've got a long ways to go to catch up with this gnarly texter, Raina Hardesty, who sent 14,000 text messages in January. That's six times the national average of 80 text messages teens send every day. I want to see those fingers. Wow, that's incredible, don't you think? Wow. 
But these teens, they really know where their priorities lie, don't they? I mean, I love the fact that there is this 16-year-old Tampa girl who jumped in front of a truck to save her iPod. This is, this is insane. This is definitely an OMG moment, don't you think? <laughs> Absolutely. You can imagine the teacher was upset. The English language is under attack. But a professor at University of Cambridge believes that by 2020, the English language will start to resemble texting. And if you don't believe that, let's take a look at the history of OK. It used to be spelled O-K-A-Y. And then we made it OK. And now if you're texting or emailing, it's just K. Because I have no time to write <laughs> OK. <laughs> I'm too busy. Right? So Marissa Meyer, which as you, you saw her on the Today Show, right? She was picked by Glamour as one of the top women from Google said that. If your web page takes 400 milliseconds longer to load, it represents a 1% decline in search volume. <sighs> 400 milliseconds. Now, 1% may not sound much, but keep in mind that we just passed the 100 billion searches a month threshold. So the volume that 1% can represent is staggering, OK? Staggering. And this crazy busy trend, of course, has affected our leisure time, too. Since the early part of this decade, we've lost 4 million golf players in the United States since 2000. Who has time to play 18 holes? Three holes, anybody? <laughs> That's about the bandwidth I have today. And the decrease in leisure time has affected everything, which is good news if you're a squirrel or a trout, because Americans are hunting and fishing less. <laughs> right? And you used to look forward to lunch. Now you look forward to lunch canceled. There are no more lovelier words spoken in business today than, can we reschedule? <laughs> right? You know it. Oh, a little time in my calendar. Yes, we have no time for anything. As uh, Karen Rabinovitz says, we don't have time to live in the moment, but we do have time to send someone a virtual gift. Yes, here is a drink via booze mail. Because as you well know, I have no time to buy a goddamn drink. Right? We have plenty of time for social engagement. Plenty of time. In fact, we went through a massive change just this February when the time spent on social networking surpassed the time spent on email. Wow. And I'm sure you've noticed it too. The LinkedIn PMs, the Twitter DMs, the Facebook private messages, are flowing in at an increasingly higher rate over regular email. So there's a big change taking place. And as a result, what you're getting is that people are signing up with increasing frequency. And notice the bump that we went through this year, with almost 6 out of 10 registering for a social networking profile. But the best way to look at all these trends is, again, to revisit these Uber trends. So let's look at unwired, the unhooked generation. 1956, small town in the Midwest, called Genie. Comes up with the garage door opener. Not far away, same year, a couple of hundred miles, another company called Zenit comes up with the Space Commander. The couch potato generation is born. The remote control rises to the top. And then suddenly, everything has to be untethered. We don't want to be tied down. So I'm very excited about this whole trend. And it's all being propelled by the unwired trend, which is changing our whole consumer culture. Because why? A traditional American value that we're all familiar with, and that is freedom. 
We want to be free from wires. We want to be unhitched. We want to decide when and where to get our information. Think control freak. With that, I leave you. Thank you for following me on this exhilarating ride to the landscape of now. I hope you found it very useful.